Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The fallout continues over the Woodward tapes on ABC's Faith of Bouvet in Washington. Just ahead, I'll have the latest developments. Taking a look outside with live cam 430, 64 degrees. Justin is in for Mike this morning and man, it feels so good outside. Will these cooler temperatures stick around? He'll let us know. And good morning. It is Friday. It is September 11th and it is cool. It feels so good outside. You know, yesterday was a record breaker. I'm not sure we broke any records today, but we're, we're probably close. You think so? Guess. I hope. I don't know. Let's 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 ask Justin. It <laughs> can't be that far off. Yeah, we're, we are going to get close this morning. Uh, yesterday was record um, maximum low temperature or low maximum temperature. What? Wait, stop. However what? you look at it. What? <laughs> the we're kind of there. We're kind of there. The <laughs> daily high temperature was the uh, coolest that we've seen on that day. Do I need to write this down? You may. You, we're okay. take notes. Okay. But this is not going to stick around. The maximum <laughs> low. Okay, got it. Anyway, uh, it is not going to stick around. We are going to see temperatures warm up. And right now we're sitting in 64 degrees. If it feels good right now, we still got the cloud cover. The clouds are going to stick around for a while longer. But once the clouds grow out this afternoon, we should get back into the 80s. And then we've got 90s in a forecast this weekend before things cool down again next week. 63 Hello to 62 Rio Medina, 58 right now Bandera. If you're heading out to the bus stop this morning, it'll be a little cool. You may want a light jacket, but by the afternoon it will be warmer. As we mentioned, 82 and partly cloudy. When you head home for school for the weekend, uh, the uh, timing of those temperatures, 67, 9 o'clock, 75 noontime, 79, 2 o'clock, and then we'll be up around 83 by 5 o'clock. Northerly winds will still be in place, 5 to 15 miles per hour. We've got the warmer stuff this weekend, and we're looking at some pretty good rain chances, I think, next week. We're going to time that out for you coming up here in just a few minutes, but let's get over to Nick. It's been a busy week. Still busy this morning? Yeah, started busy on a Friday, Justin, right now dealing with one major accident. This is going to be IH-35 north southbound uh, in between Riddiman and Benz Engelman there. It looks like there's a one vehicle accident that caused a lot of debris in the roadway. Now lanes one and two are blocked off. And because of this debris, TxDOT is on the way to clear that debris, but it may be an hour or two before they can get there at the scene. Here is a trans guy footage. Uh, one lane open on 35 southbound in between Riddiman and Benz Engelman. You won't start seeing some traffic relief until you hit AT&T Center Parkway there on 35 southbound. Um, I'll keep you updated all, all morning on this accident and hopefully they can get this accident cleared up as fast as possible. All right, Dave, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, we continue to see a downward trend in COVID-19 cases in Bear County. 69 new cases were reported. There were also nine new deaths. The city says this happened between September 1st and yesterday. We have 284 people still in the hospital. 184, 128 of them are in ICU and 80 people on ventilators. Mayor Ron Nuremberg announced a new COVID-19 testing site during his briefing last evening. It's being run by the state and will open seven days a week. There is no cost to you and you do not need to register to get tested. This one is set up the Los Palmas Library on Castorville Road. They are administering an oral swab test there. The site will run from 9 in the morning until 6 in the evening. More test sites like these are expected. We'll let you know when they are announced. Well, the pandemic could end up costing students their math foundation in the long run, says one math tutor. What's known as the summer slide, a summer regression that students undergo every year, has now become the COVID-19 slide, and it's even worse. LaShawn James with Mathnasium of the Dominion says remedial kids used to be three to six months behind and their math learning are now showing up to six months to a year behind. He says a lack of face to face learning is really impacting core subjects like math. Tutoring services have had to shift the way they operate to comply with social distancing. That means some are offering online tutoring. James says some kids are self motivated to learn, but most need to watch another human actually solve problems and be coached. He urges parents to begin investing in a face to face safe tutor for now for their child before they fall too far behind. What's happening is students are coming in up to a year behind in math. And I think that's reflected also in the fact that they canceled the star test at the end of last year. And then they also canceled the star test at the end of this year, which to me seems like an indication that we're all agreeing that, hey, we're not on pace with where we should be at. Mathnasium offers free assessment for students. He recommends a minimum of two to three hours of tutoring a week. Check with your child's school district to see if they offer tutoring services. 
In your morning headlines, President Donald Trump was back on the campaign trail last night, insisting he did not lie to the American people about the threat of the coronavirus. That's despite the newly released audio tapes from an interview. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. In Michigan. They wanted me to come out and scream, people are dying. President Donald Trump in front of a packed and mostly maskless crowd. When Hitler was bombing London, Churchill, great leader, would oftentimes go to a roof in London and speak. And he always spoke with calmness. No, we did it just the right way. Still trying to explain away his own words about not being frank with the American people over the deadly threat of COVID-19. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. The president using his rally Thursday night to try to shift focus from the crisis while ripping into famed reporter Bob Woodward, who Trump agreed to talk to in 18 different interviews for his book. Book rage. This whack job that wrote the book. Joe Biden on CNN putting the attention back on Trump. Think, think about it. Think about what he did not do. And it's almost criminal. And the, the virus is not his fault, but the deaths are his fault because he could have done something about it, Jake. Trump's own former national security advisor, John Bolton, calling out the president for saying this in private about COVID-19. It's also more deadly than your you know, you're even your strenuous flus. While telling the American people this. It's a little like the regular flu that we have flu shots for. The American people are not children. They're adults. And the way a leader reacts is you tell them the truth. ABC's John Carl pressing Trump. Why did you lie to the American people and why should we trust what you have to say That's now? That's a terrible question and the phraseology. I didn't lie. What I said is we have to become... And many have asked why Woodward waited so close to the election to release these bombshell tapes. While Woodward is defending himself, he says he wasn't sure where the president was getting this information from, and he wasn't sure whether he was telling the truth. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Well, it's 437 and 64 degrees. Still coming up, an Idaho mother facing charges following the disappearance and murder of her children. We've got the details for you. And next, the nation will pause today on the 19th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, but there will be some changes this year. We'll let you know about them. And outside with live cam, after a chilly morning yesterday, it's not quite that chilly, but it's still nice. Just North Country forecast for the weekend. Is it going to stay cold or we're going to get back to the 90s? Coming up. Well, New York City is preparing to pay tribute to the lives lost on 9-11. Today, a ceremony at Ground Zero will take place to mark the 19th anniversary of the terror attacks. Officials note there will be some additional safety measures because of the pandemic. The biggest change is that this year there will be no live reading of the victims' names. Instead, organizers will pay re play recordings of family members reading the names. Those in attendance are also expected to adhere to state and federal guidelines regarding social distancing. The ceremony will honor the 2,983 men, women, and children killed in the attacks. Costa Rica expanding its list of U.S. states allowed to travel to that country. Starting September 15th, travelers from seven new states, Washington, Oregon, Wyoming, Arizona, New Mexico, Michigan, and Rhode Island will be able to enter the country. California could also be added to the list on October 1st if it can meet certain health criteria. It brings the number of states whose visitors are allowed to enter the country to 20, including the previously approved states. That includes New York, New Jersey, and Vermont. Texas is not on the list. Well, stocks ended a roller coaster session Thursday by giving back most of what they gained. Investigators, investors were spooked by news that the first time jobless claims were higher than expected. Even though initial, initial claims for regular benefits were flat, new claims under the pandemic unemployment assistance program pushed the total number up. That helped push the Dow down 400 points while the Nasdaq composite fell 2%. And the S&P 500 lost one and three quarters of a percent. It's 442 and 64 cool degrees. Well, up next, more details as an Idaho mother facing charges with the disappearance and murder of her children. And also coming up next, a look at how the pandemic is causing more problems for those looking for work. In this morning's GMA First Look, Lori Vallow back in court conspiracy to commit destruction 
alter uh, Asian or concealment of evidence. Lori Vallow appearing remotely for her arraignment, pleading not guilty to two felony counts related to the disappearance and deaths of her children, 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. She faces a maximum of five years in prison and a $10,000 fine for each count. This month marking one year since J.J. and Tylee were last seen alive. Authorities finding their bodies in June, buried on their stepfather, Chad Daybell's Idaho property, ending a desperate and months-long search for the missing siblings. Daybell was arrested the same day the bodies were found. So could more charges be coming? We'll have the latest on the case at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Dallas. Now to a scam alert, the pandemic is posing more problems for those looking for work. Con artists are posting fake job listings for work from home gigs on social media. One floor is a woman thought she was applying for a data entry position, but as 12 on your site's Marilyn Moritz explains, what she got were lies. $20 an hour, flexible hours, work from anywhere. This job posting on a neighborhood Facebook group seemed just what Michelle Felix had been searching for. You know, this year has been pretty hard for everybody, me included. You know, I thought, why not just give it a shot? Because I'm pretty fast at typing. I can do data entry, no problem. The interview took place on a messaging app called Telegram. His icon had the Live Ops logo in it. Live Ops, as their real website shows, is an established work from home business, a cloud call center. The interview questions were basic and odd, like, do you have Cash App and a printer? He said, well, congratulations, you've got the job. And I thought that was the easiest interview ever. They would send her an Apple laptop and she'd need to buy software. And before an, any employment agreement was signed, he sent me a PDF document of a check for $2,500. She was to print and deposit it using her bank's mobile app and promptly buy the software as instructed. But she noticed the name on the check, LiveOps Company, did not match the website, LiveOps Inc. He started getting a little more pushy whenever I wouldn't respond right away. He'd be like, can you handle this? Do you understand? She understood all right that this job was not what it seemed. The check of fake. The issuing bank couldn't verify it. We contacted the real live ops who said this sounded like someone fraudulently using a version of their name to take advantage. As for Michelle, she nixed the job, but is making it her business to warn others. And people are desperate to work right now. Mm -hmm. And to take advantage of that is... Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. When applying for a work from home job, the Federal Trade Commission says be wary of interviews with someone you cannot see and request to receive or send money, especially before you do any work. All right, let's check in with traffic. It was dry today, but that doesn't stop people. Accidents from happening. Yeah, yeah, they do happen. And once again, here go Friday, started go Friday. You got a major accident on 35, but we have another one too that just came out. South Cross Boulevard at WW White Road looks like a two vehicle accident causing a little bit of moderate traffic. They're going southbound on us on WW White. Keep you updated and advised on that accident. Still working here southbound IH 35 North at Benz Engelman Road. This was a, a very major accident where uh, there's debris on the roadway. Textot is on the way to clear this debris, but until then both lanes one and two of southbound uh, IH 35 are closed down. What actually looks like it may be open now from what I'm seeing here in this camera. I'll call trans guy to confirm that. But actually this just opened up right now. So that's good news here on this Friday morning. Dave, Sarah, back to you. Oh, you know what? It's a four shot. That's right. I yeah, think. Oh. I think. Well, Never mind. Oh, wait, Never we mind. can talk about football, right? Hey, yeah, just, yeah. Just I like that better. Pass it on over to <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's talk football. Uh, we got All some right. Friday night football games. We had some games last night, too. Of course, the NFL started last night. But let's take a look at the forecast if you are. Ooh, it's good. touchdown. It's always good. Never <laughs> misses. You got to count it. Uh, tonight's game, say kickoff should be around 80 degrees. That's really not bad at all. Halftime, 77. Sunset will be around 7.43 p.m. So really pretty comfortable for the games. It could get uh, a little cool, but mid-70s, I think that's uh, just about perfect. Uh, as we look outside right now, 64 degrees, uh, cloudy skies, dew point is at 60, northerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. It's been a great 24 hours. I mean, the weather was beautiful yesterday, if you like fall weather. Stay cloudy for most <laughs> of the day. 
and uh, we're, we're going to see the clouds hang around for the first half of the day today and then break up a little bit this afternoon. We're down to 61 at Bovary, 65 New Braunfels, some 50s on the map as you get up towards Comfort. Kerrville, 56 degrees there, 57 Bernie stage. Temperature right now, 59 in Del Rio. That would be another record for those folks uh, with the uh, record low this morning, 60. So they've dropped just below that. Not record territory here in San Antonio, uh, but uh, we're close, low 60s. And uh, the highest today should be in the low 80s. 83 is what we're looking for here in town. You'll find 70s in the hill country and then some mid 80s, close to 90s, get down towards the coast. Now, we'll warn you, we'll be right back in the 90s as we get into the weekend, so it does heat back up. The upper level low that uh, helped to drive that front south and creates them a wet weather for us is finally starting to move away here. It's kind of stuck out west. It's getting a shove now, and it's going to get uh, pushed off to the north and east. High pressure trying to build in a little bit here. So the weekend is going to be fairly quiet. But uh, we're watching a couple of things, especially a, a little low out in the Gulf of Mexico that may uh, give us some rain chances going forward. Temperature is still pretty chilly up around Denver, 45 degrees there, 44 Casper, uh, 50s and 60s here in Texas. But those numbers will moderate pretty quickly. After all, it is early September. We can't say goodbye to the heat just yet. Uh, as we look at moisture in the atmosphere, so what we're looking at here, these uh, colors where you see the uh, orange and red, that represents deep moisture, and typically that correlates to some rain chances. We've had that moisture around. It tries out a little bit that over the over the weekend. That's Saturday, Sunday, same story. But notice we start to see some of those darker reds Sunday afternoon. So that's some of that deeper moisture starting to work back in. We've got a little area of low pressure that's going to work to our south. Weak frontal boundary. This is all going to combine to give us some better rain chances again on Monday. Looks like we could see some good downpours. So rain uh, returns to the forecast, but not today. Uh, we're looking for highs right around 83. As I mentioned, look for those clouds to slowly break up. So mostly cloudy at noontime, but partly cloudy by 5 o'clock. Northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. So morning fog potentially tomorrow, 90 on your Saturday, 93 Sunday. We'll put in some slight rain chances late on Sunday, especially down along the coast. And then we pick up those rain chances to a 50% shot on Monday, 40% on Tuesday. Some good downpours possible. And those rain chances linger through much of next week. We're also watching the tropics. Yesterday was the peak of the hurricane season, and it was busy out there. We're going to have an update on that coming up in just a few minutes. Where did 93 come from? What, what's that? Yeah, but it goes away. See, it's like it's there, and then it goes away. you got to remember it's still early September. This is uh, this this was a nice change, but I, it was rare. I feel like we were a little spoiled with we, this early front. Totally were, yeah. That was South like Texas winter right there. Come and go. <laughs> Let's not let's let's hope not, not go there. 452, 64 degrees. Well, the boss is back. New details on Bruce Springsteen's new album with the E Street Band. And as we go to break, we'll take it on some lottery numbers for you. Pick three, zero, five, eight, fireball is five, and the daily four is two, two, nine, three, fireball is six. Cash five, twelve, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-seven, thirty-three, Texas two-step, two, thirteen, thirty-two, thirty-four. Bonus ball, 17. Welcome back. 455. Bruce Springsteen has a new album and Paris Hilton has a new documentary. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Ramona Puga. The Boss is back. Bruce Springsteen's new album with the U Street Band will be released next month. Letter to You is Springsteen's 20th studio album and includes nine recently written songs and three unreleased compositions from the 70s. Something happened in my childhood that I've never talked about with anyone. Paris Hilton opens up in a new documentary about various abuse she claims she experienced as a teenager at a Utah boarding school. I'm also proud of just what I've been through and how strong I am and just the outpour of letters and people sending me videos and just all over online, just all these survivors who are thanking me for being brave enough to tell my story because it's something that they went through and they had never talked about with anyone and no one had ever believed them. This is Paris debuts on YouTube September 14th. An actress, Diana Rigg, has died at age 82. The James Bond Avengers television series and Game of Thrones actress died of cancer. Her daughter says was diagnosed in March. And happy birthday to Taraji P. Henson, who turns 50 today, Ludacris, who turns 43, and Harry Connick Jr. turning 53. That's what's happening in Hollywood. Romina Puga for ABC News. 
It is 457. It's a chilly 64 degrees. Well, still ahead, new details on those major wildfires scorching thousands of acres in the West. Also coming up in the next hour, Apple talking more about its Apple One subscription bundle. That's ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a man killed in a crash on the southwest side. More details just ahead. And massive wildfires continue to burn across several western states. And outside with live cam, a little chilly this morning, but the 90s are coming back. And I'm not talking music 90s, I'm talking temperature 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It's Friday, September 11th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I've really enjoyed, I got a lot of rain at my house all day on and off yesterday, the last two days. I've enjoyed this. Mm. I wanted to walk and I wore a long sleeve shirt. Did you really? It was a big deal. Ooh, hey, we got some good rain over the last couple of days. Nice temperatures, but you know, all good things come to an end. It's true. I, I'd be all for bringing 90s music back, but not, not the heat. Uh, it is uh, going to kick up over the weekend. We'll see some mid-90s potentially on Sunday. So, yes, hot, but we've got some rain chances down the line and some cooler temperatures next week. Let's check in on the pollen count. This was yesterday's pollen count, uh, but it will probably be fairly similar today. Fall Elm is in the high category. Mold is moderate, pigweed low, and that fall elm has really been jumping up as of late. Temperatures this morning still very comfortable. 57 Bernie State, 61 Boulevardi, 65 right now in New Braunfels, 63 in Divide, 63 Hondo. Uh, some very comfortable weather in place. Rain has pretty much gone away. We've got a couple of light returns as you get out towards Houston, uh, but those are really falling apart. I don't think we're going to see much really over the next three days, maybe Sunday afternoon. Uh, we may start to see some more showers coming back into play. Uh, but the forecast for today calls for cloud cover early, uh, mostly cloudy noontime 75. And then we'll top out close to 83 this afternoon, partly cloudy northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Looks great for all the uh, football games going on tonight. Uh, we mentioned earlier the tropics starting to heat up again. We're going to take a look at that and show you what could be headed our way as far as some tropical moisture at least. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But let's go over to Nick now. It looks like things are getting a little bit better out there. Yeah, a lot better, Justin. 35 in Benzingelman, nice and clear now. Just working on one accident. That's going to be South Cross um, Boulevard and WW White Road. That one's about to get cleared up as well. So let's go straight to drive times. 151 eastbound, 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, you got a 12 minute ride. So really good times there. All right, trans guide time. Here is 35 in Benzingelman. Just wanted to show it one more time. It's all cleared up now. North and southbound lanes are flowing smoothly. So you you should have no problem heading to work if you have to go down 35. Dave, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead following a crash on the southwest side overnight. It happened just after 10 in the 3900 block of Southwest Military Drive. SAPD says a driver of a truck hit a man who was standing in the middle of the lane. Police say that driver was going over a hill and he wasn't able to stop in time. The man who he hit died at the scene. The driver did stop and try to help, and no charges will be filed. A deadly massive fire out west continues to scorch thousands of acres and threaten homes, forcing evacuations. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest on firefighters' efforts to keep up. Overnight, a devastating discovery in California. An additional seven deceased individuals were located by our deputies. The so-called North Complex fire north of Sacramento has now killed at least 10 people. More than a dozen others were still missing overnight. This woman fears her parents are among the dead after their house was burned to the ground in Oroville. Waiting for the remains to be identified that they found in the same location and um, and I pray to God that it's not my parents. The pair missing for two days. Oh my gosh. This is so hard Thousands in the area have already been forced to flee. More than 20,000 homes and businesses are in danger. It's burned more than 95,000 acres in just the past 24 hours. But the North Complex is just one of dozens of fires burning in the state. Fire crews are stretched thin. Some have been working nonstop for nearly a month. Meanwhile, in Washington state, residents left stunned by the aftermath of a massive fire that destroyed the town of Malden. I've seen tornadoes, I've seen earthquakes, I've seen w waves wash out land floods. I've never seen anything like this. And in Oregon, nearly 50 wildfires are burning throughout the state, killing at least three people. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Phoenix, Oregon. 
Officials say that they have not been able to assess the damage or the death toll because they are simply stretched too thin. And looking out over this, you can tell why the task for investigators of digging through this debris would be so daunting. Street after street, block after block, entire developments incinerated as far as the eye can see. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, Bayer County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez has announced a new pilot program to deal with mental health calls. It comes in response to Bayer County deputies shooting and killing Damian Daniels during a wellness check. Rodriguez says they are investigating about $1.5 million to retrain dispatchers and will hire licensed mental health professionals. He says this would be a partnership with the South Texas Regional Advisory Council and Center for Healthcare Services. He also mentioned the city is also discussing a potential partnership. Another arrest made in a case where Bear County deputies say a three year old was seen smoking a marijuana cigar. The child's sister was recently placed in handcuffs, and now that woman's boyfriend is also under arrest. 19 year old Thomas Ray Esquivel facing a child endangerment charge. The Bear County Sheriff's Office shared video with us. It shows Esquivel calmly walking down a hall before being led into deputy's unit. A much different scene from the arrest of his girlfriend we witnessed earlier. Well, questions over the Edwards Aquifer Protection Program are now closer to being answered. The city and Via Metro Transit have plans to divert the sales tax that currently funds the program once the tax expires. City Council could vote on a different way to fund the program as early as next week. But the new funding plan has been met with skepticism as it would provide less money and incur debt. Then city staff say they're aiming to send about $10 million a year to the program. Most of it borrowed money, which would take decades to completely pay back. 19 years ago, the United States experienced one of its darkest moments when terrorists flew planes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Today, San Antonio 110 will host a memorial climb to honor the first responders who lost their lives in the attack. Due to the pandemic, the organization is holding this year's event virtually. There will be locations around the city hosting local memorial climbs, and they'll all come together after over a Zoom call for the ceremony. The event starts at 8 this morning. Well, it's 5.07 and 64 degrees. Still coming up, Amazon launching a way to print lists, recipes, games, and educational content using your voice. Plus, if you or someone you know is undergoing a mental health crisis, we'll show you how to get access to help, to the help that is available. And outside with live cam, you may still need your jacket this morning, not quite as chilly as it was yesterday morning, but you won't need it this weekend. Justin Horns has got your forecast coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. 10 minutes after 5, 54% of women and 27% of men say their mental health is worse than ever. If you're struggling, there's help available this morning. We're taking a closer look. In the morning, I just battle with myself, feeling toxic and not worthy. I was just lost. It seems more and more people are feeling the stress of 2020. In fact, one recent report found that there could be a 20 to 30 percent increase in suicides this year. If you're feeling isolated, depressed or anxious, you can find online help right now. When looking for a therapist, first find out what their educational background is. Only a psychiatrist can prescribe medications, but other therapists can use talk therapy or non-drug strategies to help. Online sites like Talkspace, Good Therapy and BetterHelp help you find qualified professionals. Some questions to ask. Are you licensed? What type of issues do you have the most experience treating? What type of treatment do you think will help my condition? What will it involve? How will I know if I'm improving? And do you accept my insurance or offer reduced rates? Lastly, make sure you feel comfortable with the therapist you choose. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The FCC just approved 988 as the new national three-digit suicide prevention hotline to help if you're feeling hopeless. The process to implement the 988 number will take two years. Telecom and voice service companies will be mandated to have a 988 hotline by July of 2022. If you're struggling with thoughts of suicide or worried about a loved one, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. That number is on your screen and it's free. Confidential emotional support 24-7. 
It is 12 minutes after 5 o'clock, 5, 12, and 64 degrees. Up next, more details as Apple confirms the Apple One subscription bundle in its own Apple Music Apps code. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. It is 516. Good morning. It appears that Apple will release a new subscription bundle this fall. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a subscription service coming from Apple. Reports say the company will unveil Apple One this fall. Customers will be able to get discounts on Apple services like music and iCloud subscriptions if they sign up for one of the bundle packages. Amazon is launching Alexa Print, a new feature that allows users to control their printers with voice commands. It will be able to print out things you might jot down on paper like a to-do list as well as content from third parties like cookbook recipes and puzzles. Finally, one more note about Apple. The company's third store in Singapore is floating in the city's Marina Bay. It's made up of 114 individual pieces of glass that are held in place by 10 support bars. The store offers a 360-degree view of Singapore's skyline and Apple products. Beautiful. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, so far only one incident on the roadways, which is pretty good for a Friday. Yeah, and the other one already got cleaned up, Officer Nick. Yeah, definitely off to a good start now, hopefully, on this Friday morning. It's been a very busy week traffic-wise all over the city, but right now things are looking good. A lot of green on the screen, and it's always good news on a Friday morning. All right, let's take a look at the Trans Guide. 281 at St. Mary's right now, flowing smoothly. 35 at Ben Zingelman once again. That looks good now. It's all good to go after that major accident earlier. 10 at Ralph Fair, no construction there. That looks great, and we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. 10 at Bernie Stage. I-10 is going to look great all, uh, right now because of no construction. It's good to see it that way. And uh, like I said, we're off to a good start this Friday. So always good times there. Thank you, Nick. And uh, what's been good times is this weather we've been having, Justin. I mean, it's, it's a rare treat. It's a little it's a little early treat for us. It is. It is actually very early. We set some records yesterday. We may set a few more records this morning, especially out towards Del Rio, not necessarily here in San Antonio. But what a change. It changes right back, though, this week, and we're going to see 90s back in the forecast. we got to talk about the tropics a little bit here because things are heating up once again. We'll take a look at what's going on out in the Atlantic. So several spots we got to keep an eye on here. Uh, we've got uh, one system coming off of Africa that has about a 90% chance of development. We've got Tropical Storm Rene. That's still moving out to the northwest. Tropical Storm Paulette, that's moving out to the north and west. These are not expected to affect land, but we've got a couple more systems a little bit closer to the Gulf of Mexico. And as usual, we've, we've got to watch these because they could develop. This one here looks a little bit better. It has about a 50% chance of development. It's going to move into the Gulf of Mexico next week. And we've also got another one that's not producing much rain, and it has a lower chance of development. It's going to move down to the southwest. Regardless of whether or not uh, these develop, I think that at least this one will throw some moisture in our direction and give us some rain chances. But we'll certainly keep an eye on it for you. Uh, should anything develop and I guess it's not a surprise that uh, we have a lot of activity out there. Not only has it been a busy year, but we're also at the peak of hurricane season now. Actually, the peak was yesterday, September 10th. And then we start to see things uh, come down a little bit as we get into October. But the way this season is going, uh, we'll probably have several more systems. So definitely something to watch outside right now. 64 degrees, cloudy skies, dew point at 60 north northeast Julie winds at about seven. And the temperatures 58 Comfort, 57 in Kerrville, 58 in Bandera. So some 50s up there in the hill country, 65 in New Braunfels, 63 at Randolph. And uh, just very comfortable. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Temperatures 
We'll be slow to rise a little bit this morning because we'll have cloud cover, but by the afternoon, once the sun pops out, we should get into the 80s. 83, the expected high temperature here in town, 85 in Gonzales, 77 in Fredericksburg, 75 your high temperature in Rock Springs. There are a few showers. I should point that out out around uh, Del Rio. These are really light. Uh, they won't amount to much. Uh, but just keeping things cool there in Del Rio where temperatures are in the 50s as we showed you. Here's our upper level low. This has been the culprit behind all of this mess. Uh, the, the front, the, the rain that we had, and uh, the really cold temperatures there across the Rocky Mountains. It's finally getting a shove out of here and we'll move out to the north and east. And so that'll allow things to be a little more quiet the next couple of days. But then we'll be watching for that tropical moisture potentially moving in. Temperature is still pretty chilly, though, up to the north. 44 Denver, 51 Albuquerque. Uh, we've got 50s and 60s here across the state of Texas. Uh, here's a look at the future cast. Clouds will burn off this afternoon. We'll be looking at partly cloudy skies. Saturday should be partly cloudy day. We may start off with some fog and some morning clouds. And then as we get into Sunday, that's when some of that moisture starts to move a little bit closer. Looks like Sunday afternoon we could start to get some showers uh, along the coast. And then by Monday, deeper moisture moves in and our rain chances go up. Uh, we should see some pretty good downpours too. Looks like some pretty deep moisture moving in. Uh, temperatures today, 67 by 9 o'clock. 75 noontime will be up around 83, partly cloudy. And then 90 tomorrow, 93 Sunday, we'll call for a 20% chance of rain Sunday afternoon. But generally speaking, your weekend looks good, just a little bit on the warm side. 87 Monday, 50% chance of rain, 40% chance Tuesday, 30% chance Wednesday, and still even some chances on Thursday. Uh, and temperatures uh, warmer than what we're looking at today, but not too bad. So uh, the pattern does become more active, guys, uh, once we get into next week. Thank you, Justin. It is 521, 64 degrees. Up next, a look at how the stars of the franchise that redefined Fright Films, well, they're getting back together. And as we go to break, let's say a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, five, eight, fireball is five, and your daily four is two, two, nine, three, fireball is six. Cash five, 12, 20, 23, 27, 33, Texas two-step, two, 13, 32, 34, bonus ball 17. Welcome back. It's 525. The stars of the franchise that brought a new definition to Fright Films getting back together. CNN's David Daniel has that and more on Showbiz News Today and the Hollywood Minute. Do you like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Nev Campbell is ready for another scream. The actress is set to return as Sidney Prescott in the relaunch of the Scream franchise. Co-stars Courtney Cox and David Arquette are also returning to join a new generation of suspects and victims. The fifth Scream movie is due out in January of 2022. As I understand it, we're trying to prevent World War III. Tenet topped the box office without playing Tinseltown. Warner Brothers wasn't showing the film even at drive-ins in markets like Los Angeles where indoor theaters were closed due to the coronavirus. But theaters in nearby Orange County and San Diego have opened, so the studio has reversed course. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Tenet will begin playing at some L.A. drive-ins this weekend. No laptops, no phones, no connecting to anything. Thank you. A couple seeking an unplugged week disconnects from the world, so they're late to realize aliens have invaded the Earth, even if they are cute furry aliens. John Reynolds and Sunita Mani star in the comedy Save Yourselves, which lands in theaters October 2nd and on digital October 6th. Constantly checking my phone in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's what we need is an alien comedy. Exactly. To remind us, get off your phone. <laughs> 26, 64 degrees. Well, still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, more details on those catastrophic conditions along the West Coast due to major wildfires. Plus, uh, Animal Care Services is ramping up its in-house services again after being shut down by the pandemic. And we'll hear from skater Tony Hawk himself as he talks about the remastering of his popular video game series. Good morning. We're coming up on 530. It is Friday, September 11th. Do you enjoy the 
cool weather it was awesome. yesterday? Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Can't wait for the next cold front. And Justin, when is that next cold front? He's like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a few. It could be a month <laughs> away for all we know. It uh, seems like once we go one of these big ones, it takes a while for us to get to another front in here. But there's nothing significant in the seven-day forecast. I can tell you that. Uh, we may get some more rain chances, but as far as a good-looking front, eh, we, we may be a ways away. We're, we're going to enjoy this weather while we can. 61 degrees, Boulevard, Verde, 65 in New Braunfels, 62 Canyon Lake. Still some 50s on the map out there in the Hill Country, 57 Kerrville, 58 in Comfort, 58 in Bandera this morning. Uh, there are a few light showers as you get out west. Uh, in between your valley and Del Rio, you're going to find a little bit of light activity. It's not going to amount to much. And I, I just don't think we're going to see a whole lot of shower activity, but the clouds will hang around for a while today. If you're heading off to school this morning, hey, you may want a light coat. Temperatures will be in the low 60s, cloudy skies, but the, the clouds will break up. We'll go partly cloudy this afternoon, warmer, uh, close to 83 for a high, in fact. And we'll still get northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. A weekend looks pretty good. I'll be a little bit hot. We'll take a closer inspection of that forecast coming up in just a few minutes and check in on the aquifer too. But let's check in with Nick first because it looks like we've had a couple incidents out there, Nick. Yeah, we had Justin, but now things are looking good. A lot of green on the screen. Um, you're going to have a smooth ride to work if you're heading in right now, so that's always good news. Okay, some drive times here. I-10 eastbound from FM 46 to 1604, you got a 40-minute commute. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. So travel times look great there. Okay, here we go. Trans guy, 35 at 37. We had some construction there earlier. That's now cleared up. 1604 at Kyle Sill looks good. 410 at 151. That's flowing very smoothly there in those north and southbound lanes. And 35 at Walsham on the northeast side looks great right now. Just remember, everyone, please wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit, and get to work safely. Dave, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, sir. Major wildfires ravaging the West Coast. More than a dozen fire related death ha deaths have been confirmed and officials say strong winds and dry conditions are fanning those flames. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Fast moving wildfires on the West Coast, turning the landscape into ash, leaving some homeowners with nothing but memories. This was my front room. There's my oven. My uh, cast iron, you know, wood burner and oven. Satellite images from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Thursday morning show parts of California, Oregon, and Washington State blanketed with smoke from these infernos. And the power went out, so then I went to look over in that direction, and it was pretty thick smoke, and it was pretty wide. I've seen tornadoes, I've seen earthquakes, I've seen w waves wash out land floods. I've never seen anything like this. Fire crews from other states are on hand, trying to get these blazes under control. The fires that are going on in the western United States right now are unprecedented, even to our most senior leadership and senior, most tenured people on incident management teams in this country. We have not seen this before. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, more than 4.3 million acres have been scorched from dozens of active fires. We'll just keep plugging away and hopefully the weather will cooperate with us and that'll be a good success. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is adding a new way to report the coronavirus death rates. The CDC will now report the infection fatality ratio by age. Using this factor, the CDC says less than 1% of people who contracted the virus have died from it. Except in the case of patients over the age of 70, the death rate for those with the virus who are 70 and older is more than five times that of the other age ranges. It stands at nearly five and a half percent. The CDC report is based on estimates since the agency does not know the exact number of infections. NASA looking for companies to mine the moon for resources. The companies would collect rocks and dirt from the moon and sell them back to NASA. The program will be available to both U.S. and international companies. It's part of a technology development program that the agency says will help ensure safe and sustainable lunar exploration in the future. NASA working aggressively toward its goal of landing the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. The companies that do win a bid, NASA expects to pay from 15 to $25,000 for 50 to 500 grams of lunar material. But what does the moon get? Yeah, I know. Leave Shouldn't her. we pay the moon back somehow? Poor moon. <laughs> There's a man in the moon, so he got to get something. 534, 64 degrees. Well, still ahead as football kicks off again, we'll show you how to make a fun snack to enjoy as you cheer on your favorite team. 
And also coming up, a closer look at how Animal Care Services is restarting some of its services after being halted by the pandemic. First, let's like take a look outside with live cam. 535, 64 degrees over the Alamo City. I'm sure you've been enjoying this cooler weather. Our Justin Horn will let us know what our weekend forecast is after the break. And welcome back. It is 537. Animal Care Services ramping up its in-house spay and neuter surgeries again after being shut down by the pandemic. In the meantime, ACS has been issuing taxpayer funded vouchers covering the cost for animals leaving the shelter. Our Jesse de Goyado has an update on the results so far. To comply with state law that every cat or dog adopted from its shelter must be sterilized, Animal Care Services started giving out vouchers like this last spring. 2200 for dogs and cats that were adopted or taken in by rescues. Just over half were taken to veterinary clinics and other groups that partner with ACS. The average cost $75, totaling under 85000 paid by taxpayers. Rescue groups chose other options. They are coming into compliance, and those that are not, they have legitimate reasons. The ACS director says much like its clinic's limited capacity, coupled with COVID-19 safety measures, meant no more spay-neuter procedures in-house for several months, others are having to limit surgeries as well. Even so, he says, ACS is tracking every voucher for every animal. It is a priority of ours to be able to make sure that they are sterilized. If not, he says people could face up to a $300 civil fine. And those fines can uh, continue to escalate and even go into to a criminal fine if necessary. That, he says, would involve a warrant. Now, we are not, I will tell you that we are not at that stage yet. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's 539 and 64 degrees. Coming up, we're going to show you how to make a fun snack that'll be a hit at your next football watch party. In your morning consumer headlines, J. Crew is officially out of bankruptcy, and the company says it's now well positioned for long-term growth. J. Crew filed for bankruptcy in May amid the coronavirus pandemic, but experts say the retailer was already struggling due to high levels of debt and a failure to keep up with fashion trends. J. Crew equitized more than $1.6 billion of debt with Anchorage Capital Group, which is now its majority owner. The company says its new strategy focuses on three core pillars, delivering a focused selection of products, brand experience, and what it calls frictionless shopping. The apparel and accessories retailer operates J. Crew, Madewell Brand, and J. Crew factory stores in nearly every state in the country. Google making some big changes to its search feature ahead of the November election. The tech giant is changing its autocomplete feature, which predicts what users are searching for based on what they've typed so far. Google says it's removing suggestions that could be seen as endorsing or opposing political parties or candidates. Autocomplete information about participation in the election will also be eliminated, such as voting methods, requirements, or the status of voting locations. And now users will be able to search for whatever they want and get those results. The move comes as Facebook, Twitter, and other tech giants are trying to get a handle on misinformation ahead of the election. GameStop says it will close about 100 more stores than originally planned. They warned more closures could also come next year. Between 400 and 450 stores are going to close this year. Meanwhile, the company's quarterly online sales soared 800%. That amounts to one-fifth of the total sales. When it comes to sales at stores open at least a year, they went down about 12%. Where's Hank Williams Jr. when you need him? Are you ready for some football? Oh, yeah. I know, I know you stayed up late watching football. Well, this morning, our Erica Hernandez shows us how to make a fun snack you can enjoy as you cheer on your favorite team. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to show you a quick, easy snack that you can make on game day.
looking for more snack ideas for game day, just head to our website, kset.com. Erica Hernandez, KSET 12 News. Well, Officer Solis and Justin both said they were sold. On the snack idea? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right, those look like some pretty good snacks. Almost look like lunch. Right now on our website, if you can find a list of game day recipes, just head over to kset.com, look for the story on our homepage. It's right there for you with more snack ideas. Maybe some lunch ideas or breakfast ideas. I don't know, but it looked good. Officer Nick, you were kind of drooling. I was, I was there. Uh, Erica had me there at the sour cream and the bacon. I, all, that's all I can think about now. I can't think about traffic right now. I just want to watch football and eat what Erica was making there. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen right now. If you're headed to work, right, uh, you expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good. You got time to put some gas, something, because things look good. We're off to a good start on a Friday morning. Let's go straight to Trans Guy 35 at FM 1103 up there in shirts. Looking great right now. Both north and southbound lanes look great. 35 and 1604, just south, south of there. That looks good. 1604 and Kyle still on the northwest side and 90 and 36th Street all looking great. So for the busy week we've had right now, this is a good this is a good little different here uh, on our Friday morning with this traffic. And it's always good to see it flowing on a Friday morning. So we have time to stop and get the taquitos. Oh, yeah. Well, yesterday, Dave, I said a uh, honey butter chicken biscuit. But Ooh, yeah. Well, we had that out. yesterday. We can <laughs> have that again today. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get uh, well, it depends. Two, two it's days kind, in a row? <laughs> it's kind of like cooler weather. So, like, I like oatmeal, hot coffee. But you can't eat oatmeal in the no, car on driving to work. No, I mean. Well, you might be able to, but. Uh, it ends mean, up being a mess. So. Oatmeal's yeah. too healthy. You got to yeah. stick with the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here you go, Justin. <laughs> Fat yeah. donut. Uh, taquitos, honey oh, butter, oh, chicken biscuit. Yeah. Uh, looking at the aquifer, man, it, it, it really jumped up yesterday. The rainfall was was great for the aquifer. It's uh, up to 662.6 this morning. So this graph shows you where we started uh, June 1st. We were well above stage one restrictions. And then this summer, uh, we had that number drop down into the stage one. Basically, all of uh, July and August, we were below the threshold. Yes, we've jumped up above, but we got to look at the 10 day average. That's the important number. Once that jumps back up above 660, then stage one restrictions would go away, our once a week watering. We're not there yet, but we do have some more rain next week, so we'll see. Anything can happen. We're getting into uh, the fall season where the aquifer tends to jump back up. Uh, it's also football season. Uh, we've got some great weather for Friday Night Football tonight. Temperatures at kickoff, 80 degrees. Sunset will be right around 743, halftime 77. Can't complain about that. Northerly winds will still be there 5 to 15. Looking at the radar and satellite this morning, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover that it's going to hang around for a time this morning. A couple of light showers too off to the west. These are drifting off to the north. And so if you're west of you Valley, Brackettville over towards Del Rio, you may see a few sprinkles this morning. We're not seeing that here in San Antonio. A big picture here with the water vapor. This shows us very nicely our circulation here in the atmosphere. So this big upper level low, uh, unusually strong. Uh, that uh, helped to push that front through, helped to push in some of that cooler air, starting to move away now. And so that's why things are going to be a little more quiet the next few days. But as we look at what's headed our way, we notice another little circulation here. This time, this is moving west. And uh, this is a system that actually the Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on, but I really don't think it's going to take on tropical characteristics. I think what it does for us is throw some moisture in our direction by late Sunday and into Monday, and it will help to kick off some showers and maybe some storms. So what we're looking at here is the moisture in the atmosphere where you see these red and orange colors that represents some uh, pretty thick moisture and uh, typically that will coincide with some rain. So as we get into Saturday, we've actually got fairly dry air around San Antonio and South Texas. Even on Sunday, the air is fairly dry, but we're starting to see some of that deeper moisture move in by Sunday evening uh, with that system. And then by Monday, it uh, shifts on shore and I think that our rain chances probably go up quite a bit Monday afternoon. So that's the next thing we'll be looking for. 64 degrees right now, cloudy north northeasterly really winds at about seven miles per hour. Temperatures in the 60s for the most part. You'll find some 50s up there in the hills. 54 Rock Springs, 57 Kerrville, 65 right now in Kennedy. And the forecast for today, up around 83. Still some great weather. 70s for the hill country. You'll find some mid 80s down there along the coast. And uh, there's a look again at the big picture. Still some showers uh, up there to our north uh, across parts of uh, Oklahoma and temperatures uh, pretty nice uh, for the most part across the country. OK, here's our forecast for today. 67, 9 o'clock, 75 noontime, 79 by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 83 northerly winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll go 90 tomorrow. We could start off with a little bit of fog 
and then Sunday 20% chance of rain late. Then we talked about those rain chances kicking up Monday, probably lingering over into Tuesday as well. But even much of next week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, we're still talking some rain chances there with temperatures in the 80s. Guys? So big outdoor plans Friday, Saturday before the rain. Looks good. May come in. You know, neighbors are left reeling after a huge explosion levels of home in St. Louis. And the whole thing was caught on camera. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's look at this. This is all that's left of a St. Louis home that was leveled in a huge explosion. Fire officials shared video that captured the blast from down the street. Neighbors were awakened by the terrifying sound. I look around the corner and it's a house. All I can think about is the little baby and the mom. Thankfully, no one was in the house at the time of the explosion. I just can't imagine if we were in the house. As she tries to pick up the pieces, authorities work to determine what caused the blast. In the meantime, neighbors are rallying to help those affected. Let's not be, let this be another storyline where we forget about her. Hey, how about some uh, good news now, huh? This little girl from Connecticut is becoming an internet celebrity for spouting famous lines from famous movies. They make it alive with a magic of The viral videos started as a fun family project to stave off quarantine boredom. No crying baseball. There's no crying baseball. Uh... But have since become a viral vehicle for a good cause. The family are using the videos to spread awareness and raise money for Feeding America, a charity effort to end hunger. So far, they've raised over twelve thousand dollars. Show me the money. The family says, why not try to help as many people as they can while having as much fun as possible with their kids. For take a look at this. I'm Jeremy Roth. Super cute. Also a little terrifying. <laughs> a little toy hatchet. Here's Johnny. 552, 64 degrees. If you've ever wanted to step into the shoes of skateboarder Tony Hawk, now you can again in the video game form. We'll hear from Tony Hawk about his newly remastered game. And lottery numbers as we go to break. Pick three, zero, five, eight. Fireball is five, and your daily four is two, two, nine, three. Fireball is six. Cash five, 12, 20, 23, 27, 33. Texas two step, two, 13, 32, 34. Bonus ball, 17. Coming up here on GMA and ABC News exclusive, the president and CEO of Walmart US will join us live. What the country's biggest employer is saying about the job forecast this fall and what they're stocking up on as our country braces for a possible perfect storm of the flu and a COVID second wave. You'll see it all coming up right here, only on GMA. Gamers get to drop in with a skateboarding legend in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. The HD remastered version of the original Tony Hawk games features familiar levels, skaters, and game modes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! There was a lot of expectation for this to come back, and Vicarious Visions was the developer that was put in charge of it. They had a, a serious reverence for this title, so they wanted to do it right, and they wanted to please the fans. I mean, we're four generations of consoles beyond the first game. And it's night and day. It looks like it looks like you're watching a movie. To see how far things have come, this is gameplay from the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, released by Activision in 1999. <laughs> the game may look an order of magnitude better, but its play style will be familiar to gamers. Once I started playing, almost immediately I knew that, that this was going to be it because you could feel it's the exact same muscle memory and feeling the god of accomplishment when you do the trick. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, did you miss Katie Science Lab? She was able to show off an experiment that resembles elephant-sized toothpaste. The colorful concoctions were shown on GMSA at 9 this week, but you can watch the segment again on KSAT.com. We also have all the ingredients needed for this kid-friendly experiment. Just look for this story on our homepage. That's a big toothbrush, too.
And once again, still ahead of Good Morning San Antonio, it can be a difficult to stand out when you're not in the office. Just ahead, we look at ways to maximize your role while working remotely to make sure you get recognized for your hard work. We've got that plus. We'll take you to break with a look at the traffic. Seems like things are moving pretty smoothly right now. Officer Solis will have that for you. Justin Horn with your weather and more news coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be back. A man is dead after he was hit by a driver of a pickup truck overnight. We'll find out why police say the driver is not facing any charges. The fallout continues over the Woodward tapes. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Just ahead, I'll have the latest developments. 6 a.m., 63 degrees outside. Take advantage of this cooler weather. Our Justin Horn will let us know how much longer it will stick around for. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, September 11th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I have really enjoyed I had yesterday off, so I enjoyed the rain. I enjoyed I took a walk with, you know, long sleeves on. Wow, really? Yeah. Didn't get cold? No, I know. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? I didn't get cold. You yeah, rebel. You didn't, didn't long sleeves. <laughs> I tell you what. It's been well, crazy. This is like a, uh, a <laughs> wintertime tease. Is that all this was here? It's, Here's what's coming maybe like in January? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. probably so. I, it, you know, it was an unusually cold air mass that, that seeped into Texas. It's only going to be here basically through about midday today. Then we're going to feel some warmth this afternoon right. and then the warmth to be back this weekend. Uh, so it was a little bit of a tease. There is some slightly cooler weather next week, too. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. But forecast for today. Cool this morning, 62 cloudy, maybe some jacket weather this morning, but this afternoon sun pops out, temperatures warm up, and we're thinking low to mid 80s for highs, so it will be warmer later this afternoon. Pollen count, uh, this was yesterday's. Uh, fall elm is high, moderate mold, low pigweed. I'm guessing we'll see similar numbers today, so just a heads up there. Fall elm has been jumping up as of late. Temperatures right now still in the 50s for Comfort and Kerrville, 57 in Kerrville, 62 Canyon Lake, 65 New Braunfels, 63 Randolph. And the radar does show a couple of ice showers out west. Nothing that's terribly heavy, and we don't really have rain in the forecast for today. But the, the cloud cover hangs around through about noon, 75 noon time, and then we'll start to see some breaks up around 83 for that high temperature northerly winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Roadways are significantly quieter this morning. Uh, less rain out there should be a little easier to. I think, around. yeah, I think that's what it is, Justin. The less rain, uh, the less busy I am right now because things are looking good right uh, outside, all over the roadways. A lot of green there, no pockets of heavy traffic really anywhere. So good news. Uh, let's go straight to the trans guide here. Ten at, ten at Cherry Ridge, looking really good. But both those west and eastbound lanes flowing smoothly. 281 at St. Mary's, not a car on the roadway there. 35 at Benzingman. This is where we had a crash earlier. Look at that, flowing smoothly now, both north and southbound. And 10 at Ralph Fair, that looks good. No construction on I-10. So makes it run a lot smoother and 10 at Bernie stage looking good. All right, Dave, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. Well, this morning we are still waiting to learn the name of a person killed by a truck last night. It happened just after 10 in the 3900 block of Southeast Military. Police say a man was in the middle of a lane near Fairlawn Drive when the driver of the truck hit him. Police say that driver tried to stop but couldn't in time. The victim was pronounced dead on the scene. The driver did stop and try to help, and police say there will be no charges against him. 19 years ago, the United States experienced one of its darkest moments when terrorists flew planes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Today, San Antonio 110 will host a memorial climb to honor the first responders who lost their lives in that attack due to the pandemic. The organization is holding this event virtually. There will be locations around the city hosting local memorial climbs, and they will all come together over Zoom for the ceremony. The event starts at 8 this morning. Well, wreaths across America is commemorating the victims of the attacks with a unified national flag waving. The organization is asking everyone to stand outside this morning and wave old glory for one minute at 846. 9.03 and 9.37, 10.03. Those are the times when the North and South Towers of the World Trade Center were hit by planes and when they collapsed in New York City. You can take a video and share it on social media with the hashtag flags across the country to participate. 
What's known as the summer slide, a summer regression that students undergo every year, has now become the COVID-19 slide. And it's even worse. Math tutor Lachelle James says remedial kids are normally three to six months behind in their math learning, but are now showing up six months to a year behind. He says the lack of face-to-face -face learning is really impacting core subjects like math. James says some kids are self-motivated to learn, but most need to be coached. He urges parents to begin safely investing in a face-to-face -face tutor and do it now before their child falls too far behind in their education because sometimes the regression might not be evident until it's too late. What's happening is students are coming in up to a year behind in math. And I think that's reflected also in the fact that they canceled the star test at the end of last year. And then they also canceled the star test at the end of this year, which to me seems like an indication that we're all agreeing that, hey, we're not on pace with where we should be at. James recommends a minimum of two to three hours of tutoring a week. Check with your local child school district to see if they're offering tutoring services as well. Well, there is now a new state-run COVID-19 testing site in Bear County, and it will be open seven days a week. There is no cost to you, and you do not need to register to get tested. This one is set up at Las Palmas Library on Castroville Road. They are administering an oral swab test there. This site will run daily from 9 in the morning to 6 at night. More test sites like this are expected. We'll let you know when they are announced. President Donald Trump back on the campaign trail last night, insisting he did not lie to the American people about the threat of the coronavirus. That's despite the fact that he admitted on tape that he downplayed the threat of the virus. ABC's Faith Abube has more. Good morning. The president is eager to shift attention back to the 2020 campaign and his political rival Joe Biden, but the fallout from those Woodward tapes just won't go away. In Michigan. They want to come out and scream people are dying president donald trump in front of a packed and mostly maskless crowd no we did it just the right way still trying to explain away his own words about not being frank with the american people over the deadly threat of covid 19. i wanted to always play it down i still like playing it down yes sir. because i don't want to create a panic the president using his rally Thursday night to try to shift focus from the crisis while ripping into famed reporter Bob Woodward. This whack job that wrote the book. Joe Biden on CNN putting the attention back on Trump. Think, think about it. Think about what he did not do. And it's almost criminal. And the, the virus is not his fault, but the deaths are his fault because he could have done something about it, Jake. Trump's own former national security advisor, John Bolton, calling out the president. The American people are not children. They're adults. And the way a leader reacts is you tell them the truth. ABC's John Carl pressing Trump. Why did you lie to the American people? Terrible question and the phraseology. I didn't lie. What I said is we have to become. And many are asking why Woodward waited so close to this election to release those bombshell tapes. While well, Woodward is defending himself, he says he wasn't sure where the president got that information from, and he wasn't sure whether Trump was telling the truth. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here at home, Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez announced a new pilot program to deal with mental health calls. It comes in response to Bear County deputies shooting and killing Damian Daniels during a wellness check. Rodriguez says they are investing about $1.5 million to retrain dispatchers and will hire licensed mental health professionals. He says this would be a partnership with the South Texas Regional Advisory Council and Center for Health Care Services. He also mentioned the city is discussing a potential partnership. Well, questions over the Edwards Auger for Protection Program are now being close are close are now closer to being answered. The city and via Metro Transit have plans to divert the sales tax that currently funds the program. Once the tax expires, City Council could vote on a different way to fund the program as early as next week. But the new funding plan has been met with skepticism as it would provide less money and incur debt. Then city staff say they're amid they're aiming to send about $10 million a year to the program, most of it borrowed money, which would take decades to completely pay back. The San Antonio couple that captured video of the blasts in Beirut last month are back home recovering, and they're now on a mission to help people in Beirut. Ahmad Khalil and his wife Lena in their condo right across from the Beirut port where that explosion took place on August 4th, both of them severely injured. 
There's this other lady next to me here, and she was a bleeding and hurt, injured. And then there's this guy also in front of me who is, I'm, not, I'm really not sure if he's alive or dead. And both ended up in the hospital. Ahmad and Lena both underwent surgery. As the couple recovers, they also want to help the community in Beirut. They're raising money to buy ambulances. You can find a link to donate right now on KSET.com. Well, it's 610 and 63 degrees. It's critically important for you to fill out the 2020 census. In case that community wants to help you do it, we'll give you the details on an event offering free help filling out the census. Well, Americans are in the middle of a mental health crisis. Find out about a new national suicide prevention hotline and how to find help online. That's after the break. And outside with live cam, we've had a couple of really nice, cool days. Things are going to change for the weekend, though. It'll be kind of back to normal. Justin Horn's got that for you. Coming up in just a few minutes, you're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. It is 614. 54% of women and 27% of men say their mental health is worse than ever. If you're struggling, there's help available this morning. We're taking a closer look at those resources. In the morning, I just battle with myself, feeling toxic and not worthy. I was just lost. It seems more and more people are feeling the stress of 2020. In fact, one recent report found that there could be a 20 to 30 percent increase in suicides this year. If you're feeling isolated, depressed or anxious, you can find online help right now. When looking for a therapist, first find out what their educational background is. Only a psychiatrist can prescribe medications, but other therapists can use talk therapy or non-drug strategies to help. Online sites like Talkspace, Good Therapy and BetterHelp help you find qualified professionals. Some questions to ask. Are you licensed? What type of issues do you have the most experience treating? What type of treatment do you think will help my condition? What will it involve? How will I know if I'm improving? And do you accept my insurance or offer reduced rates? Lastly, make sure you feel comfortable with the therapist you choose. Well, the FCC just approved 988 as the new national three-digit suicide prevention hotline to help if you're feeling hopeless. The process to implement the 988 number will take two years. Telecom and voice service companies will be mandated to have 988 hotline by July 2022. And if you're struggling with thoughts of suicide or worried about a loved one, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-273. 8255 for free confidential emotional support 24 7 again that number is on your screen and been a bad friday on the roads so far let's hope we didn't jinx it yeah i know dave you haven't jinxed it yet got a couple of things popping up here and there yeah, like wait. I, yet. <laughs> we got a, we got a stalled vehicle here. It's going to be 35 at Ritterman. Now it has Ritterman here, but I think it's more near Walters. And but it is northbound 35, somewhere between Ritterman, AT&T Center Parkway. There, I'll get you more information on this stalled vehicle. Trans guide right now. Things are still looking good out here all over the city. Tenant Ralph Fair still flowing very smoothly right now. No construction at, at I-10 at all, so makes good for the traffic to flow smooth there, of course. And we have Tenant Dominion that's looking great. Um, yeah, we're going Bernie. Going to Bernie and then going back out to 604 is looking good right now. All down I-10. Thank you, Nick. And Justin, I know you've been saying all morning this has just been a little bit of a tease. Yeah. It's cooler weather. It's basically like a day and a half that we're going to feel this great fall weather. Feels good out there right now, but it's going to change this afternoon. And then the weekend, we're talking about 90s back in the forecast, so it, it uh, races away pretty quickly. Uh, we've got to talk about the tropics because yesterday was the peak of hurricane season and it is getting active out there. We've got a lot going on and we'll zoom out here to the Atlantic and I'll show you that uh, we've got two tropical storms as Paulette and Renee. Those are moving out to the north and west probably won't affect land. We've got another wave that just came off the coast of Africa that has about a 90% chance of development and then a couple more that are close to the Gulf of Mexico. These are the ones that we've got to watch, obviously, a little bit closer to home. This one looks pretty good. It's got some shower activity, the thunderstorm activity around it. Looks like it'll move across Florida and then probably push north towards uh, the Gulf Coast. It, there could be some development there. And then there is another one here around New Orleans that uh, has about a 20% chance of development. Doesn't look as good. There's not a lot of thunderstorm activity with it. But I do think it will bring us some moisture, may actually increase our rain chances next week. So even if it doesn't develop, it will have some sort of impact on us. 
Uh, but just something to watch the next few days uh, with the tropics heating up. No surprise either. I mean, peak hurricane season was yesterday. And on average, that's when we see uh, most of our storms in the month of September, and then it starts to drop off a little bit as we get into October. But this season has been pretty wild, a lot going on, and it promises to stay pretty busy next couple of weeks. Uh, outside on the water vapor, you know, we can see that uh, little system I was talking about. We can see the, the swirl in the atmosphere right there. Uh, that is what's going to be moving in our direction, and I think it does throw some rain chances our way. Probably by Monday, that's when we'll start to see the really uh, more of an increase in moisture. Forecast for today does show some clouds early, and then I think we'll get partly cloudy skies this afternoon and this evening. Looks good for Friday night football. Clouds may briefly build back in. Uh, as we get into tomorrow morning, maybe some patchy fog, but uh, we'll see partly cloudy skies on your Saturday too. As we get into Sunday, that's when some of that deeper moisture starts to get a little bit closer to the coast, and then I think by Monday, our rain chances go back up. We could get some pretty good downpours around here. Outside right now, 63 degrees at the airport, cloudy skies, 64 Port SA, 63 at Randolph. We do have a few light showers out around Del Rio. In fact, uh, Del Rio reporting some light rain here within the last hour. We've also got some patchy fog up around Rock Springs. Visibility reduced just a little bit there. We could see some more fog up in the hill country. Otherwise, temperatures 61 Boulevardy, 65 New Braunfels, 58 right now in Comfort, 66 Pleasant and 64 currently in Catula. And the forecast for today takes us up to 83 for a high. We'll see 70s in the hill country and then you'll get close to 90 as you get down towards the coast. These numbers are still pretty good. Uh, considering, but again, they'll jump up next few days. Uh, forecast 75 noontime, 83 your high temperature, partly cloudy, and then look for 90 on Saturday, 93 Sunday, 20% chance of rain. We up it to a 50% chance on Monday, and then more chances Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it looks pretty active next week, and that should keep temperatures in check. Yeah, it's going to be in the 90s this weekend, but I think we can safely say we're pretty much done with the triple digits. So there's that. And honestly, 90, 93, that's, that's nothing. It's nothing. No, we've been through the worst. So. This, uh, last, the last couple of days have been fantastic. And we're making up for those dry summer days. That's true. It's a good thing. Yep. All right, Justin, thanks. Well, the Idaho mother facing charges in the disappearance and murder of her children has pleaded not guilty. We will learn more about the, the trial in today's GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Right now, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment fee. Keep it fresh in a squeaky clean club and at home with the Planet Fitness app. Join for no enrollment fee. Just $10 a month, no commitment. Deal ends September 16th. All right, I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein with nutrients to support immune health. I'm a performer. Always have been and always will be. Never letting anything get in my way. Not the doubts, distractions, or voice in my head. And certainly not arthritis. New Voltaren provides powerful arthritis pain relief to help me keep moving. And it can help you too. Feel the joy of movement with Voltaren. In this morning's GMA First Look, Lori Vallow, back in court. Conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. Lori Vallow appearing remotely for her arraignment, pleading not guilty Mr. to two White felony counts related to the disappearance and deaths of her children, 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. She faces a maximum of five years in prison and a $10,000 fine for each count. This month marking one year since J.J. and Tylee were last seen alive. Authorities finding their bodies in June, buried on their stepfather, Chad Daybell's Idaho property, ending a desperate and months-long search for the missing siblings. Daybell was arrested the same day the bodies were found. So could more charges be coming? We'll have the latest on the case at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Dallas.
In your morning consumer headlines, NASA looking for companies to mine the moon for resources. The companies would collect rocks and dirt from the moon and sell them back to NASA. The program will be available to both U.S. and international companies as part of a technology development program. The agency says will help ensure safe and sustainable lunar exploration in the future. Well, J. Crew is officially out of bankruptcy, and the company says it's now well positioned for long-term growth. J. Crew filed for bankruptcy in May amid the pandemic. Through experts say the retailer was already struggling due to high levels of debt and a failure to keep up with fashion trends. The company says its new strategy focuses on three core pillars, delivering a focused selection of products, brand experience, and what it calls frictionless shopping. And Google making some big changes to its search feature ahead of the November election. It is changing its autocomplete feature, which predicts what users are searching for after they've typed in a few letters or words. Google says it's removing suggestions that could be seen as endorsing or opposing political parties and candidates. Autocomplete information about participation in the election will also be eliminated, such as voting methods, requirements, or the status of voting locations. Well, time is running out to fill out the 2020 U.S. Census, and our KSAC community partners want to make sure you have all the resources you need to get it done. That is why KSAC community is partnering with the Complete Count Committee tomorrow for a census call-a-thon. Only about 65% of people living in Bear County have actually filled out the census. The survey helps our community get federal funding and representation in Congress. So if you have any questions, all you have to do is call the number on your screen tomorrow from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. You can also find more information on ksatcommunity.com. Remember, the deadline to fill out the census is September 30th, and I know that some census workers are actually going door-to-door -to -door in some San Antonio communities. So if they come knocking, they have a mask, they say they fall, stay far away and answer the door. It's 627 and 63 degrees. And more people are dying in the wildfires out west, and firefighters are not able to contain them. We'll get an update on how dangerous they really are. And football season finally kicked off last night. We've got some highlights from the last night's game between the Texans and the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're going to take a look at something that's going on this weekend. The Cowboys getting ready for Sunday night. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide. That's 35 at Ben's Eagleman. I know there was an accident there earlier. Officer Nick says that's pretty much cleared up at this time. But make sure you stay, stay, keep it here on GMSA this morning with Officer Nick on those updates and Justin with the weather. Remembering one of America's most somber days in a whole new way. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you how 9-11 ceremonies locally are being affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Outside with live cam, hope you've enjoyed the cool temperatures we had yesterday and today and all that rain, things are gonna change as the weekend approaches. Good morning, it is Friday, it's September 11th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Did you have time yesterday to, and you know, maybe go out with the horses or anything when the weather is nice, no? There were, you know, yesterday evening, I think Adam <laughs> Kasky pointed out, there was one shower, it was like, it was like about this big, and yeah. it was right over my house, and there was oh. nothing for 100 miles around it. Well, like, lucky uh, you, I, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, I didn't go outside. I wasn't getting wet. Uh, there were a couple of showers. We got a couple more on the radar this morning out towards Del Rio, but these are light. Uh, you're not going to get much rain out of this. So, about Brackettville, Del Rio has reported a little bit of light rain, though, within the last hour. And there was a little bit of fog earlier around Rock Springs that has since dissipated. I think tomorrow morning we could see some patchy fog around the area. These temperatures are great 57 Bernie Stage, 58 Comfort, 58 in Bandera, 63 the airport. Not as cold as yesterday. But still really nice for those who get up and do the morning run. It's, it's perfect weather for that. Uh, the clouds are going to stick around through about midday. And then we'll see the clouds break up. And we'll get some sun this afternoon, which will allow those temperatures to get into the 80s. 83, which, by the way, still isn't bad. Uh, but we'll be looking at 90s both Saturday and Sunday as things warm up. And then rain chances back in the picture next week. We're going to have that 7-day forecast for you coming up in just a bit. Let's get over to Nick now 
And uh, what we got? One incident there? Yeah, we got so look all the way down here, oh. 35 and 410, or 410 in Somerset, you could say. We got another major accident here. So it looks like it's a two vehicle accident already starting to cause a lot of heavy traffic build up there on those eastbound lanes past Somerset. So this is eastbound Loop 410 at Somerset Road. Accidents about 10 minutes, uh, been, been out for about 10 minutes right now. SAP is just getting on scene. Hopefully they can get it cleared up soon. But this is causing some traffic delays. If you are coming from 35, Past 35 on 410, expected delay going towards Palo Alto College. All right, drive times. I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604. You got a 12-minute ride. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604, so that's basically like if you're coming from uh, the, the the rim area, going down I-10 to 35, it's 13 minutes right now. So uh, really good times there. Okay, 281 at St. Mary's, flowing smoothly. All around the city is flowing smoothly, unless you're on eastbound 410 at Somerset. 35 Ben Zingelman looking good right now. Uh, uh, that's where we had the accident earlier in 10 at Ralph Fair on IH10. That looks good as well. All right, everyone, please remember to wear your seatbelt, get to work safely. Dave, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has caused a lot of changes and cancellation, cancellations when it comes to public events this year. Among the latest are ceremonies in memory of those who died on 9-11. Our Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Katrina, there will be a different kind of service this morning. We understand local first responders will be observing the day with a private rather than public ceremony. Well, that's correct here at the S for San Antonio Police and Fire. Uh, there will be a ceremony that takes place out here in the open outside this building. Now, because of uh, COVID-19, the on-site participation will be limited. The public will have to watch this online instead of taking part in person. Now, things this year are very different from all of the years past. Usually police and firefighters from all across our area and beyond would be climbing the stairs inside the Tower of the Americas, recreating the, pa the paces of those who died inside New York's Twin Towers 19 years ago today. Now, instead, there will be uh, several different ways that local agencies are marking this anniversary. First responders in Converse, for example, instead of planning to climb some stairs outdoors at Rutledge Stadium. Now, their event, which starts at 8 this morning, will be first responders only, not open to the public. But again, they, as well as San Antonio Police and Fire, will be streaming all of this online, inviting the public to take part that way, safely in cyberspace. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Out west, at least 10 people have now died in those California wildfires, and more than half a million people have had to evacuate. Well, meanwhile, firefighters say they are still struggling to get it under control. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, a devastating discovery in California. An additional seven deceased individuals were located by our deputies. The so-called North Complex fire north of Sacramento has now killed at least 10 people. More than a dozen others were still missing overnight. This woman fears her parents are among the dead after their house was burned to the ground in Oroville. Waiting for the remains to be identified that they found in the same location. And, um, and I pray to God that it's not my parents. The pair missing for two days. Oh my gosh. This is so heart-wrenching. Thousands in the area have already been forced to flee. More than 20,000 homes and businesses are in danger. It's burned more than... 95,000 acres in just the past 24 hours. But the North Complex is just one of dozens of fires burning in the state. Fire crews are stretched thin. Some have been working nonstop for nearly a month. Meanwhile, in Washington state, residents left stunned by the aftermath of a massive fire that destroyed the town of Malden. I've seen tornadoes, I've seen earthquakes, I've seen w waves wash out land floods. I've never seen anything like this. And in Oregon, nearly 50 wildfires are burning throughout the state, killing at least three people. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Phoenix, Oregon. Officials say that they have not been able to assess the damage or the death toll because they are simply stretched too thin. And looking out over this, you can tell why the task for investigators of digging through this debris would be so daunting. Street after street, block after block, entire developments incinerated as far as the eye can see. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 637 now in your morning headlines. The CDC adding a new way to report coronavirus deaths across the country. 
They will now report the infection death ratio by age. The CDC says less than 1% of people who contracted the virus have died from it, except in the case of patients over the age of 70. The death rate for those who the virus, the death rate with, for those over 70 and older, more than five times that of the other ages, it stands at nearly five and a half percent. Well, Costa Rica is expanding its list of U.S. states allowed to travel to the country, but Texas still not on that list. Starting September 15th, travelers from Washington, Oregon, Wyoming, Arizona, New Mexico, Michigan, and Rhode Island will be able to enter the country. California could also be added to the list come October 1st if it can meet certain health criteria. Costa Rica says that the positivity rate in Texas is still too high. It is now 6.38 and 60. Is that three? 63. 63. You dropped a degree. Ooh. Well, it can Over. be difficult to stand out when you are not in the office. After the break, we will look at ways to maximize your role while working remotely to make sure you get recognized for your hard work. The pandemic has forced millions of Americans to say goodbye to their workplaces and hello to their home offices. The whole office shut down, so it's pretty much everyone who could went home. And it's a little diff difficult because you don't have all the amenities that you would have in the office, but you adapt. Almost twice as many employees are working from home than a traditional setting. While there can be benefits, it may be tough to get noticed. Experts say check in with your team members and your managers as often as possible. Communicate about what you completed at last daily. Also, set regular work hours and stick to them. Make sure you have a space that is designated for your work only. So I have Hamilton as my Zoom background right now. If you really want to stand out, make sure you're being productive. So turn in projects before they're due and regularly offer new ideas. Make systems run more smoothly. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Well, according to the Census Bureau, in 2018, employees who worked at home earned more than those who commuted to work. The irony is many employees say they would be willing to take a pay cut for a chance to work from home. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Goes to Houston, Texas. The first NFL game of the 2020 season is now in the books, and the Kansas City Chiefs won the opener against the Houston Texans 34-20 last night. The game did feel a little different than in years past. Only about a quarter of the seats had fans in them, and coaches wore face masks due to the pandemic. Players also made statements on the current social justice movement in the United States. Most of the players on the Chiefs were on the sidelines for the national anthem. One kneeled. The Texans stayed in the locker room during the national anthem. And Texans head coach Bill O'Brien says that was a team decision. It's really not about the flag. It's about uh, making sure that, you know, that people understand that black lives do matter and that there is a systemic racism problem in this country. And so that's what our players decided to do as a team. The Texans will play the Baltimore Ravens next, this time in Houston. That game scheduled for Sunday, September 20th. Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys are getting ready for their first game. They took on the Los Angeles Rams Sunday evening. The Cowboys got some good news to start the season. Wide receiver Amari Cooper and a few other players that have been battling injuries practicing yesterday. Some players that considered taking a year off to the pandemic are much better spirits these days, saying they are pleasantly surprised the season is starting on time. I was really, you know, uh, thinking about like, man, <laughs> man, like we ain't gonna have, you know, no preseason games. They're gonna probably try to cancel the season, like as soon as we get done with training camp. Uh, but now all those butterflies are uh, out my body, and yeah, I'm pretty confident about, you know, starting this season and finishing it. After getting in here and kind of getting in the routine of, of training camp and and being here all day and and spending time getting ready for the season, um, you know, you just kind of lock into to a, a normal year. You know, today was like a normal Wednesday. We came in, uh, had our meetings, had our practice, uh, just finished up our afternoon meeting. So it's starting to feel a lot more like game week. Kickoff between the Cowboys and the Rams scheduled for 720 Sunday night. UTSA football will start their season tomorrow under a new coaching staff. However, head coach Jeff Trailer still has not said who the starting quarterback is going to be, and the offensive coordinator does assure us, though, it will not be a quarterback by committee. 
we want to make sure the guy that we picked, and, and this guy knows this, and our quarterbacks know this, that um, we don't want them playing looking over their shoulder. You can't play the position looking over your shoulder and wondering if I make a mistake, am I, is somebody else going in? We're not going to play like that. Uh, we've picked the guy that we felt like has given us the best chance to win, and we're going to go with him. We will get to see who gets the shot at starting, like everyone else, when UTSA kicks off. 2.30 in San Marcos tomorrow afternoon. College football. Now we're cooking with gas. We got some college football going. So many people are super, super excited. Officer Nick, I know you're probably one of them. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just going to put that hook them hook horns right there. I'm a big longhorn wait, fan. Wait, 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 wait. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know Justin's looking at me the side eye over there. Oh, that. We, got, we got a problem now. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, right now. I just can't wait for tomorrow college football. I'm excited. You're right about that, Dave. Okay, a lot of green on the screen right now. It looks good in most parts in San Antonio, but we're still working on this accent here. Eastbound Loop 410 at Somerset Road. Uh, this accident is blocking at least one lane there on those eastbound lanes. Expect a little bit of a delay. We have SAPD on scene, and it looks like records are on scene to tow both those vehicles out of the roadway there, but still causing some traffic buildup. All right, wanted to show this graphic. I didn't get to show it this past Monday, but I know a lot of people went back to school on Monday. So it's back to school safety, school zones, no cell phones. Remember that it's a big no-no there when you're in a school zone. Please go the speed limit. Watch for pedestrians on the roadway. Watch your crosswalks when, when taking a right. Make sure you're paying attention to those signs that have pedestrians able to walk through the crosswalks and the mama patrol there watch for them too and bicyclists especially kids on bikes gets very dangerous this time of year and just school safety and just being safe there and watching out for those kids especially when they're getting off the bus make sure you stop there when the stop sign on the bus stop comes out please thank you officer nick and speaking of football justin you have a little football graphic yeah. behind you and nick i still love you man ah thanks cool. justin appreciate it man hook him <laughs> 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 all right uh oh, let's talk about football ah, <laughs> get me, get me. <laughs> i was waiting for the, the wreck'em david i didn't hear it hey uh, wreck'em there it is okay football forecast tonight uh the, the weather looks pretty good for it we've got some fall like weather uh underway and temperatures It'll be right at about 80 for kickoff, 77 by halftime. That's almost ideal. The sunset around 743, mostly clear skies. I think partly cloudy to mostly clear. Uh, northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Let's talk a little bit about the aquifer. We mentioned this earlier. The numbers have really jumped up uh, thanks to the recent rain. Kind of hard to see on your screen there, but we're at 662.6. We're back up above that 660 foot threshold. But we've got to look at the 10 day average, which is 657.7. So we're not going to come out of stage one just yet, but we're moving in the right direction. And this recent rain has been very helpful. It was uh, very, very good to see. Outside right now, we've got uh, temperatures in the low 60s, 63. Dew point is at 59. Northerly wind at about 12. Feels very fall like out there. And we still got cloudy skies. 58 in Comfort, 57 Kerrville, 55 Lost Maples. You're at 66 in Pleasanton. Cloudy skies all around. It will take some time for these clouds to dissipate, but I do think the sun will be out this afternoon. 59 in Del Rio, that's another record low for you. 54 in Rock Springs, 64 right now in Katua. And this is a look at the forecast highs today. Low 80s for the most part up and down the I-35 corridor. Just like yesterday, there'll be a, a transition of temperatures here. You'll find 70s out west and then some warmer readings as you get down closer to the coast. 88 in Victoria today. Uh, radar shows a couple showers out west. We've noticed a little bit of rain around Del Rio. There have been some reports here. This is all very light uh, and moving off to the north, but a few showers will be possible next couple of hours here. We have not seen any here in San Antonio. And there's a little closer look. Some light rain moved through earlier in Del Rio. You may get another little batch here within the next hour or so. Uh, let's look at the water vapor. And uh, we always look at this to give us an idea of where the spin is in the atmosphere, where you get these areas of low pressure. That's typically where you can get some rain. And we're noticing we've got a little spin here around New Orleans. This is slowly going to be pushing west next couple of days. And as it does, it's going to throw some moisture in our direction, but not until Monday. Uh, next couple of days will be dry. And what we're looking at here is the moisture in the atmosphere. So the reds and oranges represent deeper moisture. And that's where your better chance of rain is. Notice Saturday. It's generally pretty dry here around San Antonio. That'll be the case Sunday too. But that deeper moisture will be just off the coast as that system approaches Sunday afternoon. And then by Monday, that moisture surges in. And I think our rain chances come back up with this next system. Uh, something to keep an eye on. Forecast for today, 75 by noontime, mostly cloudy. We'll be up around 83. We'll call it partly cloudy by 5 o'clock. Northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And look for 90 tomorrow. We may start off with a little bit of fog. 
partly cloudy Sunday, 20% chance of rain late, and then we up it to a 50% chance on Monday and even more chances as we get into next week. So more beneficial rain could be on the way. Guys. All right, Justin, thank you. 650, 63 degrees. The pandemic has left many people second guessing their vacations, especially because of social media. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you what travel shaming is and how to not let it affect your plans. And once again, outside with live cams. Is the sun up yet? Just a bunch of clouds. What time is, what time is sunrise today? A little later. It's Nine, still sleeping. After <laughs> seven, yep. It likes those seven. cool temperatures. All right. Sun's enjoying it. Snuggled in its cloud comforter. Coming up here on GMA and ABC News exclusive, the president and CEO of Walmart US will join us live. What the country's biggest employer is saying about the job forecast this fall and what they're stocking up on as our country braces for a possible perfect storm of the flu and a COVID second wave. You'll see it all coming up right here, only on GMA. Hey, David. Hey. Hi. It's almost over. It's almost over. Are we going to check it? Are we what are we doing? No, what's almost drive? over is, oh. Drive to work. Hey, Nick, you're up. Oh, uh, right now we're dealing with one accident still right here at eastbound Loop 410 at Somerset Road. Uh, still blocking off about one lane at least of traffic there. But look, if you're coming from 35 on 410, uh, expect a delay going towards Palo Alto College as this accident is still live right now. Transguide 35 and 1103 looking good. Uh, 35 at 1604 flowing smoothly all around the city. You got time to put some gas. Just get there safely. Wear your seatbelt, please. Justin? Yeah, we're full of surprises this morning, but not in the forecast. Uh, we've got cloudy skies to start. We'll see temperatures up around 83 degrees uh, later this afternoon. So the clouds will clear out some and uh, northerly winds around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Extended forecast uh, will be close to 90 tomorrow. So it does warm up this weekend. We may start off with some fog. Look for a couple of uh, showers and storms uh, late on Sunday, and then uh, we'll get uh, some more rain chances next week. 50% chance of rain Monday. 40% chance Tuesday, so the rain comes back into play. We may get some more good downpours. So this is an encouraging forecast. The rain was so great to see. The cool weather has been nice to see, but it is going away this weekend. The most important thing we learned today was you got time to get gas or even breakfast on your way to work. So there you go. What else? <laughs> good right, day. GMA is next. We'll see you back here. GMA at 9. Taco on the way to work right there.